Hey, what's going on guys? I know it's been a while, but I'm back, and today we're going to be looking at how to create a mushroom cloud using the particle simulator. I actually got inspired to do this a long time ago while I was playing Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies on the map Nuketown. On that map, for those of you that don't know, there is a big cloud from uh, the aftermath of a nuke strike. And after staring at it for a while, I realized that it was made up of particles that acted in a way that I thought could be duplicated in hit film. So I set out to create a similar effect, and here's the result. So to begin, drag the particle simulator effect down into the timeline and use the orbit tool to give yourself a better view. I'm going to go to Emitter and change the shape from point to circle and the trajectory to explode. Because the shape is a circle, the particles will spawn anywhere inside the radius of that circle depending on how big you make it. And then the explode trajectory just means they go from the middle and then they go outwards. I'll change the X rotation under shape to 90 so that it lays flat and set the radius to around 150. Next, change the texture source to built in and use the dark smoke texture. I set the life to 4 and the speed to 40, and the scale to around 70. Because I want the cloud to already be there when the video starts, I'll set the time shift slider under general to negative 5 seconds. If you select the particle system and go to the lifetime tab, you'll see a bunch of descriptive options that control how the particles work. The alpha is the transparency of the particles, and I'll use a gradient to control them. Making the slider go from black to white to black means that the particles will fade in as they're born and fade out as they reach the end of their life of 4 seconds. It just creates a smoother overall effect since the particles aren't appearing and then disappearing right away. Next, I change the texture angles under appearance variation to give the particles some spin and randomization. Now you can see the basic outline of how the clouds work. The next step is to duplicate this emitter twice, one to act as the middle cloud layer and the other to be the top. To make the middle cloud seem smaller, I decrease the life of the particles and lessen the amount per second. And now you can see here the basic outline of the whole mushroom cloud. For the middle fire particles, I made another emitter from scratch, changed the shape to circle and the trajectory to cone. Rotate the trajectory Z to 90 and the shape X to 90. Check mark the boundary box and adjust the radius. Now I have a tunnel-like path for the middle layer. Now adjust the life of the particles to fade out near the top cloud, like we did before. Under appearance, change the texture to fire ferocity 2 or whatever looks best for you. It's important to change the blend mode to add so that they have a glow to them. I repeated the alpha lifetime event and under color, I started them with a gray that quickly changes to orange and then added a red later for variety. If I turn on all of these layers, you can see a rough example of the final product. It's really up to you to figure out how you want the cloud to look through adjusting the lives of the particles, the speed, color, and anything else that makes it how you want. Now it's time to bring our cloud into the real world. Go to Import Composite Shot and select the track that you created with a 3D track. If you missed that video, check the description for a link. You really can't do this effect without knowing how to track your footage. Your imported composite shot may look weird because the point layers only cover what they tracked. So trim everything down and adjust the timing accordingly. Now if I go off into perspective mode in orbit, I can see my tracking points and 3D camera off in the distance. If you have enough points, you'll be able to see where your original footage was. Cut and paste your cloud into this tracked composite shot. It won't be in the right spot, so choose a point from perspective mode, copy its position, and paste it onto the cloud's position. Resizing and rotating may be necessary. but now you should have a particle simulator locked into place into real-world footage. This is a general idea of how to achieve the final product. I'll go over color correction and anything extra that I added in a later episode to save time. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Feel free to show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing, or subscribing if you're not already. I'll see you all in the next video.